Welcome back to a new episode of the Lobo Life Tales of a Lobo podcast incorporating Texas Southmost College, Texas Ace program, where we hear stories of our fellow classmates and staff. I'm your host, Sofia Aleman, with my co-host, Gael. Hello, welcome back to the new podcast episode. And today we have a very serious topic on mental health. Right there, Sofia? Yes, we do. The importance of mental health. And today with us, we have three guests. My name is Dominic Teran. My name is Yarazi Garcia. My name is Ana Ramos. And I think this is all of your first time here? Yes. Yes. So thank you again for joining us. We will now be sending out invite lists. So if you get a list saying a paper saying that you are invited, we will invite you to a podcast. We will give you a, inf- the information and, the, and we will ask you for your time. Of course, if we can't answer a question, you can always send an email to Ms. Neto or talk to her in the library. So why don't we get into the the topic of our podcast today, the importance of mental health. And let's start with the understanding of mental health. So what does mental health mean to you guys? Mental health is just pretty much, it's name pretty much the sanity of someone. I really don't know. I'm sorry. It's okay. I feel like mental health means to me, like, when someone has build up so many emotions inside and doesn't know how to express it out mm-hmm. or they don't have someone to talk to. I agree with what Anna said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to me, mental health is mainly how, how your mind works, you know, what you're going through, um, how you're feeling, how your life is impacting you in various ways and, you know, just, just emotions, yeah? Um, I do agree with Sophia here, and I, I actually kind of agree with all your statements here so far being said. Mental health is definitely important. Well, I think if you're not strong mentally, you won't make it far in this world. And there have been sadly a few cases where some people couldn't have the sucks to see, but I think for today's episode, we're trying to bring awareness to it. Yeah. So, and we want to hear you guys' story, and, and we will also explain our story. So, yeah. continue and go ahead. Okay. So... Some, some common mental health disorders that a lot of us go through, you know, depression, anxiety. Um, there are some cases of depression and anxiety that are very severe that do hurt us physically and mentally. So I think if, you're, if you are going through that, definitely seek some help if you can. Get a support system. And we'll, we'll go into more detail about that during the podcast. Yes. So some statistics about this is more than one in five adults live with mental illnesses, which, if you really think about it, is a lot compared to how many people we have on this world, and which is about 59.3 million people, um, according to a 2022 article. And around 6% of the U.S. adults experienced a serious mental health condition in 2022, and approximately 16.5 of us youth aged 6 to 17 experienced a mental health disorder in 2016. 6 to 17. Um, I will, still in that I would also add to that that mostly around, this is around when you hit puberty. So your mind might be going crazy, like thinking about all these things and not to mention school probably add up, mixed with family and then, oh, I need to start learning how to be an adult and then all of this. So I think I think mostly teenager will experience more mental health issues, but it's also a part of growing up in a weird way. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately in this world, I think a mental illness is probably more common than it should be. And, you know, that's just the sad truth. And some, let, why don't we go into the myth versus facts? And I'll, I'll, let, I'll uh, let you guys know the myth, and then you'll just give your opinion on that myth, and then I'll tell you guys the facts. So one myth is a lot, of pa- a lot of parents actually tell this to their children. It's children don't experience mental health issues. I believe that is wrong due to, I'm sorry. I believe it's wrong because like the kids could be going through so much and the parents could say that's a myth but uh, it could also affect the way of the son or daughter the way of thinking like oh they may not love me they think i'm just making stuff exactly. up exactly yeah oh i do also think it's a myth for the fact that there's a lot of children that go through a lot of things and there's a lot of hispanic parents there's a lot of mm-hmm. american parents that are really like just straightforward have already been and gone through a lot of things, which is really just like, oh, you'll just get over it type of... Mentality. Yeah, mentality. I think it's also myth because you really 
you don't know how that person is feeling. So, yeah. It's kind of just like, like, I guess like ironic or, yeah. yeah, ironic to say that you're not feeling this way when in reality you don't even know how they feel, you know? And I, w- I would like to add on to that. I think that affects a child when they're growing up as well and that affects them even more when they're like older. Because now, let's say they try to get into a serious relationship, what if they get traumatized from what their parent did? They start well, doubting. Yeah. Start doubting, start like, oh, they don't love me, or oh, they hate me, or oh, and that can affect their friendship, their work, everything. So I think parents should understand that they should listen to their kids more often. Even if it's something dumb, even if it's something little, it's important to make sure our kids grow up nice and healthy, so that way they have the mentality of like, yes, I can, yes, I will. And... I think a lot of his parent parents, I think we can all agree here that our parents kind of grew up like that. That way, yeah. that way they're traumatized and giving that us. And that's no disrespect to them. We all love our mom and dads and whatever, but I think it's time for, I think it's time for us to change that. Mm-hmm. When that we, mentality. Yeah, that mentality is for our kids. And obviously we're going to do some things that we're going to regret because we got traumatized from it. We're, we're kids. But, but at the end of the day, unless you fix that, unless you fix most of the stuff, it's going to get better. Yeah, like you said. Like, uh, getting help is a big change. It could change your whole life, depending on how deep you're into depression. Because depression could mess your whole life. It could, like how he said, it could affect your choices in life. Also, getting help could also affect your choices in a positive way instead of a negative way. Mm -hmm. Like he said, like work, it could affect your work, how you feel, how you act between people. Instead of bringing people down, you help them because, because you understand how they feel. I think that parents saying um, that kids don't experience mental health issues is just, it's just I, I feel like it's a, a form of neglect towards your child's mental health because mental health comes in various forms and ways and regardless if what they're going through isn't as serious as it could be compared to others, it's still serious to them because it's affecting them. So I think it's, I think, I think it's just a bit silly that parents really do think that kids don't go through anything because they all they have to do is go to school. But, you know, part of growing up is uh, becoming your own person and having your own personality and, you know, going through with everybody else's opinion and trying to figure out who you are as you're growing. So the fact is, every young children may show early warning signs of mental health concerns. Um, Half of the mental health disorders show first signs before a person turns 14 years old. So that's before. So that's what, like middle school and below. So that's that's actually really sad. Yeah. Um, The next myth is that people with mental health conditions are more violent than others. I guess it would depend on the person who it affects. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you can be... You can be, you can have mental follow, but you can be just sad, like really sad. But you can be, men, you can have men, like let's say there's a guy and a girl. The girl is aggressive all the time. They're like violent because they're mental health. But the guy is not mental health, but he's just sad, doesn't talk to anyone. It just really depends. Like mm-hmm. it kind of, it kind of, yeah. It also kind of, yeah. It also kind of go back how you grew up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think a lot of mental health go back to the way you were teach when you were growing up by your parents just copying what your parents were doing because as kids we don't know any better so we just copy whatever we see Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add on anything to that no not really yeah I I agree it's just it depends on the person depends on their um, uh, I know um, aggression is genetic with some people um, but violent acts I feel don't don't come with mental health I think it really just depends on how bad the mental health of that person is and what they've gone through to to lead them down the road of those violent acts. Um, But the fact is uh, people with mental health conditions are no more likely to be violent than anybody else. Only 3% to 5% of violent acts can be attributed to individuals with a serious mental illness. So, you know... People who, who need to depend on medication normally um, tend to be a little more violent because, well, if they, well that's, not, um, that's not a fact. That's just me saying. But 
I feel is if, if you need to depend on medication or if you need to be um, in an institute where you need to be watched because of these violent acts, then I think maybe it does come with that serious mental illness rather than um, a not so serious mental illness. And I think Sophia is not trying to say like, oh, if you're like that, you're a bad person. No, 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 no. no. I think a lot of people get that confused. Like, oh, are you saying that I'm a bad person? No. We're just saying that that since you have that, you're going to be, you're going to need more watch. You're going to need more eyes on you. You just need to be. um, Yeah. It's because some medicines are known to like bring the anger out of some people. Like the hormones. Yeah, the hormones. Increase in hormones. And, you know, it's really nobody's fault. Um, Nobody's. blaming anybody yeah. if if you feel that people are calling you uh, a bad person because of these violent acts just seek mental help uh you know a therapist those help a lot um i know right. some people think they're not um helpful but hearing somebody with a a, a degree or maybe not even a, a therapist just come to a friend and hearing from a different perspective really can bring you yeah. a new perspective yeah or heck sometimes and this is more a little controversial sometimes people go into religion to help mm-hmm. and i re- i'm actually a bit fan of that because i do believe in jesus christ and i do believe that god will help me set my path and that just helped me personally to become a better person so anything i was going through i was like you know what i'm just gonna look for jesus and jesus found me and jesus forgive me and a lot of people will take that path. I know some people say like, oh, but Jesus is not real. It's not the fact that you, you believe it's real or not. It's the fact that the faith. It, faith, the faith you have in him, yes. If you have faith in him, trust me, you're going to be fine. You're going you're gonna to believe in it. And then if no one else believes in it, that's their, that's their problem, not, not yours. Well, it's not a problem, but it's just their own opinion. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Um, next myth is you can simply snap out of depression. No, no. The issue of that becomes if you can just easily snap out, then that should be a problem. Uh, that mm-hmm. was by that was by choice. And there's some people. I'm not gonna say all of them, but there are definitely some people who pretend to be depressed, and that really like ticked me off because it's like there are actually people that need serious help that actually commit suicide or hurt themselves physically, and then you're over here acting all sad over like something really small, and then you go back to normal like nothing ever happened. To me, it's like, what the hell? Like, why are you doing that? I think people who do that have a different type of illness or um, mental issue that they could seek help with as well. Um, but I think if I, I think if you were able to snap out of depression, there would be no need for a therapist. Therapist or, there, or there medicare. There would be no need um, for yeah for medication or any of that. You know, any programs that could help you because if if you could i don't think anybody would choose to be depressed it's, yeah it's a terrible feeling it's yeah. a terrible and, mentality and not, and not only that it's like if that was truly the case then why is this all of a sudden becoming a big problem now especially in our generation our generation really cares about the mental health mm-hmm. part because we were we were and i'm not blaming to the last generation but i'm just saying the last generation teach us the way they were and we're like no that's not right that's not right for us. Yes, there's a lot of issues that um, have come up over the years about how the last generation has really impacted our mental health, and we just we just want to fix that and make sure our new generation or even just us um, get the help and proper education and yeah, and guidance that we need yeah, to be the, a better person. And yeah. hopefully not to pass it down to our future children exactly. or the future generations. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this is especially I think it's especially more. Porn. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to go like too far in it, but because a lot of people would be like, "Oh, guys cannot be depressed." No, anyone can be depressed. Mm-hmm. And it really ticking me off saying like, "Oh, guys cannot be depressed." I'm like, no, because our and girls. I'm pretty sure you have your own issue with how how a woman is supposed to act. But with us guys, I think you can agree with me here. We got to teach us. Oh no, you have to be a man. You have to be strong, no matter what situation you are. And it's like I'm sorry, but no, that's not true. Mm-hmm. You're gonna, yeah, you're I, gonna, you're gonna cry. You're gonna have breakdowns, and I hate when, when like dads, are like, no, you have to be strong. You can be sad. You have to be a man. I'm like a man. I'm sorry, but that doesn't work. It yeah, doesn't work. I agree with that. Yeah, I think anybody and anyone can go through uh, some sort of mental illness, especially depression, and it's it's really sad to see um, men be put to a 
a standard where they they can't show emotions of any sort. Yeah. Um, when in reality, we're all human. We all have emotions. We all have um, our our moments in life where we're stressed, and sometimes we just need a break. You know. And I'm glad people are starting to come around on that because I've seen people already start saying that men should like talk about their feelings mm -hmm. because before it used to it wouldn't be like that. Now it, it is starting to become like that. And in general, it's uh, everything is starting to come out more. Like you know what? Maybe we should care about like the girls, how they feel about like. But like, like when they were pregnant or when they're on their period or anything. And us guys, it's like, okay, maybe we should care about how they feel about being a man and how to do, go through all the toughness. Yeah. So it goes, but it always just goes about anyone can be sad and that's okay. Because yeah, you're a human, that. human at the end of the so day. It's a proper emotion. And sometimes being sad and crying it out really does help. It really makes you feel better. It makes you think about... Um, kind of Because I, I know when I, sometimes when I cry, it makes me feel better by... Allowing me to release that stress, yeah. and you know, after after that good cry, I kind of just forget of like you know why yeah. I'm. It's sad. it's okay to cry. It's okay to have a breakdown, but it's never okay to hurt yourself. So, uh, do you guys want to add anything more on? You can simply step out of depression. No, no, no thank you. No. Um, well, the fact is, um, depression is not a choice, um, and if you think it is, I think you should really check your priorities. You know, your mentality. Um, but it, it's also not a sign of weakness. So if you think you're weak or somebody's calling you weak mentally, um, then I think you should probably reconsider who you should have in your life as a support system. Because I think if you have a mental illness and, you know, so, some people do say that some people take uh, the easy way out um, by committing. And unfortunately, that that does happen quite a, uh, quite a bit, but it's not a sign of weakness. We all go through something, and I think if you need some help, go to a friend, go to a family member, get some professional help if you really do think that you need it. And even if you don't think that your issues are serious enough for a therapist, a therapist really does help in many ways, regardless if you think um, your issue is serious or not. Um, Depression is a serious mental health condition, and it often requires professional treatment and support to manage effectively. Recovery is a very long process, but it varies for each individual, and I think it's a very important thing to know that um, even if you think you're at the lowest point of your life, and if you are at the lowest point, point of your life, then I promise it does get better, and you just have to see it forward and believe and have faith in yourself and what you're doing and just be happy that you are getting the the help that you need because you're doing it for yourself to to be better as a person and to live the life that you want um so why don't we go ahead and go into the the role of social media that has um on our mental health what effect does it have on our mental health what do you guys think i'll let you guys go first yeah <laughs> whatever you feel like yeah, take a minute to think it's okay um, I honestly think it has a really, really big role in it for the fact that there's a lot of people who are like just miserable themselves and decide to go to other people and be like, oh, no, you're this, you're that, you're that. And make other people like feel a type of way about it, bring other people down just because you're feeling a type of way. So I think it has like a huge impact with other people, whether that's bullying through um, social media or whether that's any type of thing or messaging other people. I just think it has like a really huge role for the fact that a lot of people just say comments and put comments that are could be really, really like, yeah. yeah. Anyways, you continue. Yeah, I also believe what Yadisi said because there's also some people that really don't know how you're feeling and they be putting things in the internet, like making fun of you or saying things that you're this, that you're that, when actually they don't really know how you're like mentally. If you're like mentally stable or you're not, so I really think it's also a big role. What was the question again? <laughs> uh, the role of social media. Yeah. Basically. How does it impact mental health? Uh, Negative and positive. Yeah. Well, one thing I agree about social media because I do use it a lot. Um, that you can be yourself, like you can show yourself a lot, but there's also come the sound side of well, people doesn't like who you are, so they can make fun of you, bully you, harass you, which by the way, that's breaking David Law which is also known as cyberbullying, which I actually know the story mm -hmm. behind that law. 
Oh. Basically, the, the story is there this guy named David. He was using social media, but then he got harassed, being cyberbullied, and he ended up committing suicide because of it. So, so they made a new law under him, under his name. So don't go out of your way and just bully people. And especially if you have, like, a big problem, like, like oh, they, they make fun of me, so why can't I not make fun of the back? Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not, it's not going to be worth it in the end, so you might as well report it to an adult or report forward to the law enforcement they will take care of it I already forgot the question again but I'm just gonna <laughs> say something the impact of social media impact uh, social media has a very huge impact actually like you said there was cyberbullying and stuff like that but I think I think if you're getting cyberbullying I think you should just take a week off for yourself oh. and even though I understand it's big and then you have it on your phone and it will well, keep committing it. You could just report it, and also just talk to someone who can help you out and hear you out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think social media has an impact um, on our mental health, uh, negative and positive. Um, in in negative ways, there is a, like everybody said, a lot of cyberbullying, unfortunately, and there are plenty of harmful and harsh. Uh, things being posted on social media, um, whether it be racism, sexism, just or, straight or, on bullying. Or like drawing up to shoot a school. Become Threats. A big, yeah. um, there, there's a bunch of things on the social media that shouldn't be allowed for, um, it sh- shouldn't be allowed on social media because there are a lot of kids on social media nowadays, especially the younger de- generation, which is a lot more gullible. And I think some of these influencers and content creators uh, create content that isn't appropriate for children. And sometimes these content creators are targeting younger audience, which does impact uh, the the kids' mindset. Um, Sometimes they say things that they shouldn't because they think it's cool. But in reality, uh, I think these uh, content creators should really have a more... um, a more I get a more like how do I say it? appropriate yeah like have a more appropriate and just mindful uh, content towards these younger generations and I think there's there's there there are a bunch of positive things on on social media um, you know sharing um, having a good time yeah sharing safe love uh, sharing self-love um, advertising, mental health, promoting it, making sure you're getting the help that you need. Um, you know, the, you know, there's, um, I forgot the word. There, there's a lot of positive things that can help us physically and mentally. And I think content creators that promote proper health, um, or making sure that you're getting the help that you need and the, you get to see all these content creators um, um, create a safe space for everybody. And oh, I forgot the word. Okay, we'll just move on. It's okay. Uh, but I do think that social media impacts a lot of children and even adults um, physically and mentally. Well, not physically. Sorry. Also because like everything they see, they believe it. Yeah. So I think that's also part of it. Yeah. That's a big part for relationships. Everyone, every time someone posts about a relationship, they're like, "Oh, they're so perfect." No, they're not. No, they're not. No right, a, lo- a lot of kids contradict themselves and start uh, getting insecurities because other people are telling them, like, "Oh, you know, you need to be this way." You know, to to a societal standard that a lot of kids are going to start going into. Which, if you look at it now, middle schoolers now, elementary kids now, you can really tell how social media has big in, has taken a, a a big role on them considering how I used to dress versus them now, it's really a yeah. big difference. When we were when we were all in elementary, it was very different compared to now. So I remember I had that emoji shoes last time. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Princess yeah. Sketchers. The yeah. Twinkle Toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And talking about relationships, actually, I wanted to add, no relationship is perfect. No matter how good it seems, there's, there will always be bumps, but it's how you enjoy Man. those mm-hmm. moments. Yeah. That's and the thing that matters. If, you know, I, I know a lot of people who go on social media and 
have an obsession with uh, stalking. And whether it be like a serious case of stalking, I think, um, you know, uh, right. a lot of people, uh, okay, we'll, we'll just cut that part out then. Um, okay, so do we want to discuss self-care? Like how, give just, self-care tips. Just love yourself. Like if you have something, if you have something that you love, like playing game, listen to music, go out for a walk, do it. Like if you just do something you love, you're probably going to forget. It probably help you even more. Like you should have time for yourself, meditate, and treat others how you want to be treated back. Mm-hmm. If, 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 you yes. need a, if you need a break, take the break, man. Just yeah. take it. Because trust me, like us, sen- I think we're both, a lot of us are seniors. So I'm a senior. I think you're a senior too. We're, we're really tired, but we keep pushing. And once once we're done, we're going to take a little break for oh, ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You guys want to add anything? Any tips? Mm, no. <laughs> Everything but say. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. think uh, for self care tips, I think you should really uh, try to make yourself go out more, have fun, make time for your friends and family, even if you are busy, like at least once a week to make sure, make sure you um, spend time with them, make sure you're there for them and everything. Um, some, you know, exercising actually helps a lot physically and mentally. Making sure you have a, a proper diet, having um, a support system that you need. Um, and if, if you need help, the, um, the suicide and crisis line is 988 if you need assistance and if you want help, if you think somebody needs help or if you are that someone, please go ahead and call the hotline. Um, there is a tropical behavior health crisis hotline. It's 1-877-289-7199. And... But I think that one's outdated, so they sh- I should probably get that renewed. But I think everybody who has, has outdated ideas should get it renewed. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the new uh, the new number is nine eight eight for suicide crisis hotline. So if you really need it, please call or not go up to a friend. Go up yeah, to a friend that actually cares for you. A counselor that yeah, yeah. that's at school. Um, just get as much help as you need. I know before I would um I would tell myself that a counselor doesn't really help, you know, but. This year, a couple weeks ago, I did go to the counselor, and it helped a lot getting another perspective. Actually, she just knocked some common sense into me. I already knew everything she told me, but hearing it from from a... a, Trusted adult? Yeah, a trusted adult, or just an adult in general. It gave me a new perspective, and it really just made me realize, like, it's really all in my head. Because when you start overthinking, you're thinking all these things, you kind of get stuck in your own head, like a, like a bubble. And it's foggy, and it's difficult to get out of that mindset. So I think talking to a, a counselor really will help you, um, regardless of what you think. Just give it a try, and I think it'll, it'll ben- benefit all of us, and you specifically. So any closing remarks before we close this podcast? No, it was just really great to be here, to be honest. All right, okay. Um, we're, I guess, we'll go ahead and... Yeah, well, thank you so much for watching uh, Lobo Life, uh, Tales of a Lobo podcast. Um, thank you so much for watching us. Uh, thank you for being here, our guests. Yeah, your time. Uh, had a great time. I hope you guys really learned something from this podcast. And if not, then that's okay, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, but re- and remember, just always seek help. The call line number, mm-hmm. once again, is 988. We're going to probably put it up on the screen. so that way you Yes, at the sure. end, we'll, we'll put it. Um, please, if somebody you love or somebody you know just needs help, Try and get them the help they need. You know, try to be there for them. Just love and appreciate your family. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the day. And like and subscribe and follow on our Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Keep, uh, try to keep updated. And yeah, thank you guys so much. Bye.